Hello everyone! Okay, here we go. This is part two of this, this looping tutorial series in C4D. In this one, we're going to learn how to make a looping animation that's based on a, a camera move where it rotates around your scene like this. So I'm going to show you how to loop this. If you haven't watched part one already, I highly recommend checking that out first. So in the first one, the main idea was that we took a scene, we made an instance of it, moved it in one direction, and then we moved the camera the exact same distance so that the first frame and the last frame lined up. So to make a rotational camera move that loops, we're going to make a scene and then we're going to pull it away from the origin a little bit. And then we're going to make an instance of that. We're going to rotate that 90 degrees and move it up in the Y axis. Then what you need to do is when you animate your camera, you animate it around the origin as well. You animate it 90 degrees and then you move it up the same distance that you moved the instance of your scene. That way, uh, your camera is going to look at the scene in the same way on the first frame in the last frame because we moved them and rotated them the exact same distance together. All right, so let's just dive right in. So first thing I'm gonna do is make a null at the origin and I'm gonna call this the whole scene. And then I'm gonna put everything for my scene into this. So let's start with a cube. I'll just make something quick here. Uh, something like this will be fine for now. It doesn't matter too much. We're gonna tweak this as we go. Next thing we're gonna do is make an instance of this whole scene. So we go here, make an instance. We're gonna set it to render instance. So let's rotate this 90 degrees and we'll move it up until this looks like the next, the next level of this thing. Let's do, let's do 180, nice even number. And now what we're gonna do is just sort of move these shapes around so that this looks like one continuous scene. Okay, something like this looks pretty okay. The next step, let's make another, let's just copy this instance here, and we'll just put it the other way around. So we're going to make this one go minus 90, and we're going to put it down 180. So now each of these steps, we're moving it the same amount, and we're rotating it the same amount. The next thing we want to do is make a camera, and let's have this be a nice long lens and let's put it right here on this corner. So now the next step is to make this camera loop. So we're going to put a null, call this the camera mover. Let's put the camera in it. So what we did, we moved this instance up 180 and we rotated it 90 around the origin. So we're going to do the exact same thing with the camera. So set your keyframes for your rotation and your Y position, the first keyframe, and then go to the end and set it to 90 and 180. Put a keyframe there. And then don't forget to make this at frame 360. Just need one frame after. And also make this a linear move here. So now, uh, basically, when this gets to the end here, it should go back to this initial position, and it should line up. So now we have a looping camera. A looping camera and a looping scene, and the best thing is that if you edit anything in this whole scene null, it's going to propagate through the other instances. So this is the hard part. The rest is just all fun. You can just put stuff in the scene, and it's going to loop automatically. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of complexity to the scene. Now that we have the base and we have it looping, we can sort of do whatever we want. So I am going to make this, uh, I'm going to duplicate some of these cubes, just add a little bit more to it. You know, and now we're starting to get something that's kind of interesting because it's kind of hard to tell where this loops but it still does. The thing I want to talk about after that is lighting. So I'm going to put in uh, an octane daylight, which is going to make this look lit from one side. So the thing is, if you put in a daylight, if you go to the front and the back, there's the lighting's not going to match up because we're rotating the camera 90 degrees. So what you can do is you put it in the camera mover, in this inside the null, and now the lighting's going to move with the camera. So now you can just adjust the lighting however you want. You know, you can give it uh, some, some light here. Let's just put some shadows on it quick. 
you know, something like this. So you get some interesting lighting. Now when you rotate it, the lighting is going to move with the camera. So at the end, your lighting is going to match up as well. So to be honest, that's everything you need to know if you want to make your own scenes that have this same kind of looping rotational camera move. For the rest of the video, I'm just going to sort of break down how I put together this scene just so you have an understanding of how to do that. So here's that scene, the, the one you just saw, and this is the, the base of it. This is when I had just made the cubes. So this is literally just cubes. It's basically what we had just done, but just slightly different looking. After that, the next thing I did was I added some texture to these cubes and I added little surfaces on the top. I just did that by duplicating these, bringing them up and making them smaller like this and then making a different texture. The next thing I did after that step was I started adding some details into the structure just to make it feel a little bit more realistic, um, to make it feel a little more interesting. I added these bamboo railings, I added these ladders. You can get these objects and textures from the last video if you look at the link in the description. I also added these little ramps just to make it feel like it's a little bit more interconnected, like you could actually go to all these places. Then after that, once the basic structure was done, I just filled it in with details that are really similar to what we went over in the last video. So, you know, you can see this shrine here. There are a few of these, uh, these Zen gardens here where you have these little rocks that are going up and down. These were animated using the same techniques from the last video. These bamboo poles, these are swaying, exactly same animation technique as the last video as well. And you can find all the, the you know, the ways to animate these penguins and you can get this penguin model from the, the link in the description uh, of the last video as well. The one thing in this video that's new is these flags. So I just made one banner and I was able to make this looping cloth animation um, using a tutorial from EJ, which I'll link in the description. Really awesome tutorial, I had no idea you could do that. And then once I had animated one flag and looped that, I made a bunch of them in a row just using a, a cloner. And you can see they're all kind of swaying in the wind right here. And the way I animated them swaying in the wind was actually the exact same way that I animated the bamboo poles from the last video. They're just inside of a bend deformer, as you can see. So I animated the strength of the bend deformer back and forth. And then I offset it using the same technique from the last video, just the way that you do the bamboo poles. And then I also have the bend angle of these animating. So it looks like they're sort of swaying in different directions. So I think that's pretty much it. So thank you for checking out this video. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I will do my best to respond in the comments. See you guys next time.